Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video here on our beautiful channel. Today we're going to be making a kind of full-fledged um, dynamic array using functions. So, as I said before, we need mostly to use classes for our uh, dynamic arrays, where we can make a dynamic array and it can just use its member functions to expand and add more things. But since we haven't got into classes yet, I'll show you this using excuse me, using uh, regular functions here. So I made all the prototypes just in order to quicken up the video a little bit so I need so I know exactly what I need to do and uh, yeah we need these four there are a lot more you can make you can make remove ed element you can make um, like iterator things and stuff like that and there's a bunch of other things you can do but uh, we'll just keep it simple we'll go ahead and do this um, so as I go along I'll explain stuff uh, the first thing I really want to explain is why I'm doing this constant int reference well this means that Mostly, when you send in references, references become aliases of the things that you send in. Okay, you don't want to send in values here. You want to send in something that it can become a reference of, like a, a variable, of course, something that is in memory as a as a variable. So uh, the reason you do this is because it's more, it's a little better. It costs a little less computing power to do this, and as long as you know that you'll be sending in variables here. If you're sending in values, you could get some errors since it's a reference. Um, so be careful of that. That's why I have from as a regular pass in by value. If you watch my pass by value versus pass by reference video, uh, you'll you'll see the difference. But uh, it takes a little more computing power. It has to create a new integer where what you send in will become, this will become a copy of that. Instead of this, which becomes the alias and just straight up keeps the address and uh, accesses that uh, variable directly. And because you do that, because you become that variable, you need to make it constant in order to not, by mistake, change that value in here. Because we're not going to have to change the value in here. For example, here we have an integer reference without const because we know we're going to have to change capacity when we expand our, our thing here. So uh, just so you are clear on that, we can get started. So initialize, basically, what happens is it goes from to cap and it, it makes sure that our array at position i equals an initial value. So we don't have a bunch of uninitialized things here. Okay? That's very, very, very important. Uh, the thing I did here is, remember, first time when you create your thingy here, uh, let's do that actually, int cap equals 10, uh, max cap for array, int number of L equals 0, number of valid elements in array, and then we'll create our actual array, uh, we'll just call it array equals uh, new int cap. Okay, these are the guts of the program. These this keeps track of the valid numbers. This is the max capacity at one time, and this is the uh, actual array which keeps the which is the container here. And this cap will be changing. It will be increasing, and so will this array will be growing and growing and growing as the need uh, as the need arises. So this why we have initialized from because once it has a few number of element things like five, you don't want to start from zero again and remove those and make everything zero again. Okay, when we expand it, we get a whole bunch of new uninitialized uh, slots in the memory, right? And we just need to initialize those, not everything else. Because if we did that, we'd remove everything valid from the array as well. So you'll understand that as you try it and, and work with that. So it's really important, or I love this. Actually, you don't need to initialize as long as you have. Uh, number of elements because you will never be able to access those um, elements that are not initialized anyway. So actually some of my friends and some people don't do this but I, I like doing it just to be safe. And expand. Well, if number of elements is larger or equal to cap. Uh, oh wait, this is for add. I'm sorry about that. Let's just do that. Let's stick with... Whoops. Let's just do these first and then we will... Um, we'll get to expand at last. So, expand. What do we need? Array, cap, number of elements. So if if our array is full of valid numbers and is equal to capacity, we need to expand it. And this is the place where we actually add the element. So, array at position number of elements plus plus equals element. And as I said in our last video, this is just that it increases it by one after the operation is done. So after it's done, number of elements will be increased as it needs to. And the position will be uh, the one, the last, uh, after the last valid number. So this will add anything 
uh, at any time. It will it will add it even if, like if it's full, it will expand it and then add. If it's not full, it'll just skip this and it will add something. So in that way, it's a, it's a smart and really compact function here. Sorry for babbling here. I'm I'm a little lost of words sometimes, but uh, yeah, that's it. And get at is actually a little little complicated since we haven't talked about exceptions and stuff. So this is something you should actually keep in mind that you need to work with some exceptions here. Um, if like I mean you could throw an exception if it's out of bounds you know like if if uh, let's see index is larger or equal to number of elements because remember number of elements in itself is the how many there are but if you try to index number of elements in here like just like this it will be one past the last element, so you'll get an error. So you will have to do minus one in order to get a the correct value, the last actual value there. So that's why we're doing larger or equal to. So there, and then we will say larger or equal to number of elements, or less than zero. Index zero, throw exception, uh, out. Okay. You could do something. I don't know. If, I don't know if you could. Or well, you don't have to do this actually. You could just throw out of bounds, just like that. And else value equals uh, array at position index, and then return value. Otherwise, it will just exit out of it itself here. So I think this could work. I think this could work. Okay, let me see. There we go. Just to make sure that we know what's going on. I think if you have to cache the throw in order to uh, get this printed out. So uh, we'll just do this as well. But this will help us exit out in case there is an error. So. Let's see if that's correct. I know there's better ways to do this. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a little tired today, but uh, we'll just stick with that. And here we go. Here's step one for expansion. Here, I'm going to do this in steps. So step one. Uh, step one equals increase, increase max cap. So we'll do that. Cap multiplied by itself or two. Yeah, two multiplied by itself. So uh, you get a, the double of cap. And then step two equals uh, create temp array. So int temp array equals new int uh, the new capacity here. Whoops. The new capacity that we created. Okay. Three is actually copy over valid from old array. So we'll do that. And we'll just go up to number of elements because the new capacity is increased. If we use cap here, we're gonna in the old array we're gonna go out of bounds because it doesn't have that new capacity. Like it's not that big. Excuse me, it's not that big. Uh, number of elements though, it has number of valid elements, and that's all we need to push into the temporary array. So temporary equals array position y. So we copy it over. Step four equals to uh, delete old array uh, memory because it's already copied over to this new memory location here so we can just delete the old one otherwise we'll get a memory leak so you have to delete the old one we don't have to delete temporary here and I'm gonna explain why uh, 5 point old array pointer to new location okay so array equals temp so the thing is, this pointer is now going to point to this new memory location, which has everything copied into it. The old memory location is gone, so array is going to point to whatever temporary is pointing to. So we will not lose this new here, this new uh, memory that we have allocated. We don't have to delete temporary array. If you do that, you're going to by mistake delete the new array that we created and copy the stuff over to. So don't do that. Temporary, the actual pointer will just disappear here at the function end. But what it created, with the help of it, what what was created will stay still in the heap, and that's why we have to point our array pointer, which actually stays a, until the lifetime of the program, uh, to to that memory location. That's what we're doing here. So uh, I hope you understand that a little bit. And but these are the steps in order to expand a dynamic array. 
OK? And these are the steps here in order to um, do stuff, in order to add elements. So after we did that, we actually might want to initialize step 6 init new array okay so initialize from so from is number of elements cap array there we go so we'll initialize the new values to zero after number of elements uh, so let's just see if this even runs here it runs and then let's add some stuff let's let's start by initializing the array for the first time um, did I need zero cap array and then we'll add some stuff let's add hundred to array cap okay and then let's add yeah let's just add one see what happens okay cool it didn't crash and then we'll just print all array number of elements let's see if this works it worked, so we added 100 to this. And remember, our max size is 10, so it hasn't expanded anything yet. Let's make sure we know when it expands. So, uh, see out array expanded and new size uh, capacity. So, now we know when it expands. Uh, let's just add a bunch of things here. Okay, let's see. That's not 10, but I'll, I'll just make sure it works. Okay, so we got seven elements here. Uh, let's say this is two. Capacity is two. So after the first two elements are added, it's going to say, oh, it's full. Let's double the size. So two more will be added. And then, oh, okay, it's, it's uh, full again. So we'll double the size. And then it's eight. And we just added up to seven, so it didn't expand again. If I added one more here, two more, it would increase it to 16. 16, and we have nine elements. And the 16 is how many elements we have until it has to expand again. And that's the reason, the reason for that is because we have to reserve space, right? We don't want to have to use this big function all the time. So if we expand it by one all the time, this plus one all the time, we're going to have to expand this all the time, all, 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 all the time. And we don't want to do that. It costs a lot of computing power to do this new and delete and stuff like that. So it's better to reserve some memory in case we're going to be adding more values here. So you can add more up to here. It won't expand again. See, it didn't expand again. It's just 14 values. Now, if we were to add up to 17, uh, we would get an expansion to 32. And it would keep going. So now we have even more space to work with. And you have to be a little careful with this. Uh, this isn't a standard. You could do plus five. Okay, that's something you can do as well. Depending on what you need it for. So remember that. Just remember always what you need it for. And uh, yeah, that's about it guys and girls. Um, it seems to be working. Uh, we could do print all and let's say at position one we have 2000 and we just want to access that print or uh, let's see get at one array let's, I just want to see if this function actually works and it did 2000 now if we try to get at minus one minus two even doesn't matter we'll get something random here which does not exist and we don't want to do that so that's kind of weird it should have thrown the exception um, right here index is larger less than zero then turn value well it should have so that's kind of weird but anyway We'll talk more about exceptions later. I'll read up on that later. But zero should work. We'll get 100. Yep. And if we do 60, we won't get a throw. We'll get a random access number here, which is really dangerous. Don't do that. That's not good. 
Um, but yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. The exception thing. Yeah, I'm a little eh. I'm a little uh on the edge, but I'll try to I'll try to try to fix this. I think you have to try it in order to actually make that. So you can end the video here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this. Try um, get at uh, sixty. Uh, oh wait, how was the function anyway? Index array. Oh, it was like this. I think. Um, catch. Catch block. Try. Was it like this? I think it's like this. I think it's like this. I think so. Let's see. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. That did not work. What about a C pointer? Does it matter? Well, that's kind of weird. Well, sorry about that, guys. Just ignore that. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll read up on that. We'll see you later. But thanks for watching. Have a good day. And I hope you learned something. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.